Hi everyone, Sean here with Reality Forge. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use Take Recorder to capture in-game actors like the off-road vehicle from the template. We'll start with driving over a landscape and then learn how to use the camera crane with auto keyframing to quickly create our shot. We will then learn how to apply this animation to a proxy vehicle and fix things like motion blur on our wheels before rendering out. In this video, I'm going to be using the environment we created in the erupting volcano video. In this project, I'm going to navigate to the maps folder and then open the canyon map. If you've seen that video, this is probably what you have. If you haven't, in that video, I show you how to set up the materials and give you the source files to get exactly this landscape. To start things off, we're going to zoom into this section over here. In the description of this video, you'll find a text file. Copy all of its contents, don't make any changes, and paste it on your landscape. You'll end up with a tunnel of rings. A small note here, if this isn't working for you, make sure the landscape is created at the same height I created mine. The reason we're doing this is because if you are following along and you drive your off-road car through these rings, you'll end up with a cinematic very similar to mine. On the upper right, we're going to click on settings and then world settings, and then override our game mode to the off-road game mode. Now, when you press play and editor, the off-road car will spawn, which you can then drive using the W, S, A, and D keys. A second note here, the only reason we can see these game modes or have them in our project is because in the previous video, we started off with the vehicle template. After pressing escape to exit play and editor, we're going to locate the player start actor and move it all the way back here to the start of our tunnel. With everything now set up, we're going to go ahead and save our map. Once that's done, we're going to click on window, cinematics, and then choose take recorder. Once take recorder opens, we're going to play in editor once again. Don't click on the viewport as you lose your mouse, but if you've done this already by accident, you can use shift F1 to get it back again. With our game running, we're going to add a source and take recorder, and you're looking for this off-road car pawn over here. With the source added, we can now click on the record button, which is going to capture everything our off-road car pawn does. Now you can click in the viewport, and as you drive your car around, take recorder is capturing all of this to a sequence. Once again, if you are following along, keep your car in the center of these rings and you'll end up with a cinematic very similar to mine. That said, you don't have to drive your car here. You can drive it anywhere on this landscape and take recorder will capture that gameplay. Once you're done, you can press the escape key to stop recording. Next, we're going to open our content drawer and navigate to the content folder. Here, we're going to double click to go into cinematics, then takes, and then there'll be a folder with today's date. Inside this folder, you'll find a cinematic called scene 101 that you can double click to open and then play. You can also lock the viewport to any cameras by clicking on this button over here. As you can see, it's playing back what it captured as we drove the car through the tunnel. From the quickly added project, we're going to open the place actors panel. And up here on the search bar, we're going to search for camera. Drag out a camera rig crane and place it anywhere on the left of your car and move it slightly higher. Press F to focus on the crane and then while holding Alt and your left mouse button, you can orbit around it. Now drag and drop a cine camera actor into the scene and to get this to work with the crane, we need to drag and drop it on top of the crane in the outliner to make it a child of the crane. Then when you reset its location, it'll be in the right place. Now when you make changes to your crane, your the camera stays where it should be and we're going to set this at 90. We're also going to set the Z value on our camera to 90 so that it's pointed towards the car. Let's now position our crane so that the car is in the center of the frame and we're also going to go to the front orthographic view and move our crane just above the landscape. Back in our perspective view, we're going to change this over to the cine camera actor. And in the details panel, we're going to set our field of view to 18 just so that it's a little wider. Sequences created by take recorder are going to be read only. So you'll have to click this lock over here and then you'll be able to add tracks. As the crane is already selected, it will show up over here. And then we can add a transform subtrack by clicking on this plus and then selecting transform. The transform track is going to store keyframes as we animate our crane moving alongside our car. Move your sequence to where the car is passing the first ring, right click and choose set start time. Then go to the point where the car passes the final ring and then right click and choose set end time. With our start and end defined, we can press the F key to focus on this region. Now let's begin animating our crane. We're going to go to the beginning of our sequence, move the crane forward so that the car is in the center of the frame like this and then I'm going to add a keyframe on the transform track. Let's now go to the middle of our sequence and once again, line up the car so that it's in the center of the frame and then add a keyframe. Let's now move this to the end of our sequence and once again, line up that car so that it's in the center of the frame and then we're going to add a keyframe. Move your playback head between the first two keyframes and adjust the position of the crane so that the car is in the center of the frame. Then we're going to go ahead and add a keyframe. Repeat the same process for the middle to the final keyframe. Go to this area in between them, adjust so that the car is in the center of the frame and then add a keyframe. With six keyframes, you should have a decent track of the car except at the end as the car slows down. So move your playback head between the final two keyframes, center the car and then add a keyframe. 
we're still losing a little bit of track towards the end as the car slows down. So repeat the same process again. Go to the point between the final two keyframes, center the car and then add a keyframe. Once you're done animating your crane, select the Cine Camera Actor on your outliner, click on the Add button in Sequencer, Actor to Sequencer and then add Cine Camera Actor. If you're new to Sequencer, the camera cuts track up here is very important. This is the active camera that's being rendered. So we're going to delete the existing binding and add our Cine Camera Actor that we just added over here and stretch it out for the entire length of the sequence. Let's lock our viewport to the camera cuts track and play our sequence. So in about five minutes, we've captured the off-road vehicle from the template using Take Recorder and animated a camera crane alongside it. Now we're going to set up some animation for our crane pitch, yaw and arm length. Let's add keyframes for all three of these. And if you try to make changes to this with your mouse, it may be a little too fast. So if you hold control, you can get more precise movements. Now I'm going to change the viewport to the Cine Camera Actor by clicking on Perspective and then Cine Camera Actor. Then I'm going to add a keyframe track to only the rotation under transforms of our Cine Camera Actor. I'm doing this because now when I enable Auto Key by clicking on this button, our crane pitch, yaw, arm length, and the direction our camera is facing will automatically be keyed when I make a change. So to begin, I'm increasing my crane arm length and pitching it downwards so that the camera is just underneath this jump here. After getting it into a position that I like, I then orient the camera towards the car. Because we're using automatic keyframes, I can move a second into my cinematic and simply point the camera back at the car and Unreal will record this keyframe. So now our camera tracks the car as it's coming over that first jump. We're also going to move our camera backwards by reducing the arm length and yawing to the left. Like we did earlier, we're going to go to the middle of the cinematic, roughly about here, and reduce our camera arm length, so we're pulling back. I'm also going to set the yaw to 90 so it's pointed right at the car and I'm going to then orient the camera like this. Now as we're starting at the base of that first jump, your camera may clip into the landscape. So just increase your crane pitch and automatic keyframes will record it for you. On the way to our next keyframe, we are losing tracking of the car. So we'll just frame it a little bit more in the center and that should look a lot better. All right, this is what we have so far. So we start off with this jump and then the camera slowly pulls back to this side profile view of our off-road vehicle, roughly at the middle point of our cinematic. At the end of the cinematic, I want the camera to move back and focus on the volcano. I'll start by reducing the crane arm length and setting the pitch to zero. Because we need the volcano and the car in the frame, we will need to move back a little bit more. So I'm just going to reset this to 500, which is its starting value. While we're at it, we'll also make some minor adjustments to the framing. So that covers the basics of this cinematic, but I had an idea while recording this video, what if the camera panned up and went to the right of the volcano? So I added a keyframe four seconds before the end and then readjusted my camera's final position like this. So that negative space to the right of the volcano can be used for something like a title. To animate the smoke, I'm going to select the VDB volume, which has 249 frames. Then from our current end frame number, we're going to subtract 249. With our volume actor selected, we're going to add a track for it in Sequencer, and we're also going to add its volume component by clicking on this cross and selecting this option over here. Then on the volume component, you're going to add a frame track and set the current frame value to zero. We're also gonna add a keyframe. Then we're going to go to the end of our sequence and set this value to 249. Now when you play your sequence, the smoke is going to be animated and won't be static. However, before concluding, we need to remove the easing that gets added by default to any keyframes in Unreal. So select both of your keyframes, right click and choose linear instead. Now as we're going to be using the movie render queue, make sure it's enabled in your project. So in the plugins menu up here, search for movie render queue and it's this plugin right here. Click on these three dots to make sure you are using movie render queue, then open it up and click on unsaved config. Up here you can specify where your files are going to get saved, so create an empty folder and select it. After this, click on accept and then render local. Once this starts rendering, you'll notice there's no suspension or wheels and our body is just floating in space. Fixing this is pretty easy, but before we fix it, let's understand what we're going to do. We're going to create our own version of the car blueprint, just add the mesh, suspension, tires, and play the captured animation on the suspension. Open your content drawer and navigate to the vehicles folder, and then inside this, you're looking for an off-road car folder. Here, you're going to right click and select blueprint class and your parent class is going to be an actor. We're going to name this blueprint BP underscore off-road proxy and then double click to open it. Once the blueprint opens in the same folder, you'll find the off-road body and the suspension. We're also going to drag four copies of the off-road tire. So one, two, three, and four. Then on the left, double click to rename your tire. So I'm using tire underscore FR, meaning front right. I'm doing the same for the other three. 
So FL, BR, and then BL. Shift select all four tires and drag and drop them on SKM off-road, which is our suspension. On the left, select a tire and then on the right, specify what socket it's getting attached to. Here we're searching for viz and then wheel underscore whatever tire you selected. So for example, tire FL is getting attached to viz wheel FL. Repeat the same process for all four tires. We're also going to go ahead and add a red light here so that we have some illumination coming out of the front of the car. Back in our environment, you're going to double click on the subsequence and drag and drop the blueprint we just created. With the actor selected, we're going to click on the add button, actor to sequencer and this button over here. Then we're going to add a transform track. Unfold off-road pawn zero and scroll all the way down to the transform track. This is the data that was captured by Take Recorder. So control C, scroll all the way back up Go to the beginning of your sequence and paste it on the newly created transform track. Now you should see both cars in identical positions. The suspension on the blueprint we created is called SKM underscore off-road. So we're going to add a track for this in sequencer by clicking on this plus and then SKM off-road. The suspension on the pawn we drove and captured with take recorder is called vehicle mesh. So we're going to go back to sequencer and look for the vehicle mesh track right click and choose create linked animation sequence name this something you can easily identify in my case this is going to be off-road suspension then click on add and then export to linked animation sequence add the animation to the skm off-road track by going up to animation and then choosing it in the list of options here we're going to move this animation sequence back here so it's playing at the right time and disable the off-road car pawn zero now when you exit your sub sequence lock your viewport to the camera and play it it'll look exactly like it did before and renders out as well. Motion blur on the wheels is going to be a problem and you can fix this by adding two settings to your render configuration. The first setting is anti-aliasing. Here we're going to override anti-aliasing to none, set the spatial samples to two and the temporal samples to four. I do encourage you to play around with these values to find a look that you're going for. The next setting we're going to add is console variables. We're going to add two here. The first one is going to be motion blur quality. So as you type here, it's going to suggest options. We're going to select a motion blur quality and set this to a value of four. We're also going to add motion blur separable. So it's this setting right here and set this to a value of one. Click accept and then render local. And with that, you now have a cinematic of a car you drove over our terrain. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this video or what you would like to see next on the channel. Give us a like, give us a sub, and I'll see you in the next one.